Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Welcome back to Jamie Photography. So in this tutorial, we're going to do a little bit of day tonight. We're going to take this image of this beautiful little chapel uh, from Ipswich in Suffolk, England. The raw file is, uh, is available. If you go down to the comments below, you'll be able to download the raw file. And if you wish, you can follow along to see how we how we do this. So this is the original sky. This was in the morning and um, the sun was just starting to come up and I've shot for the highlights as you can see exposures 1 320th of a second at f8 um, and I've I've uh, underexposed slightly to ensure that the sky is is kept uh, available for us to use the data being being available. So um, what what I normally do at the start is I get, normally go down to transform uh, and I look at the perspective of a shot but I actually I'm quite happy I don't really want to mess with this and main reason being that the perspective is okay is, is that I've used my 16 to 35 mil lens and I've shot actually at 21 millimeters which doesn't tend to give too much in the way of distortion um, as opposed to when you go out to 16 millimeters and then you definitely do need to look at your transform to bring your verticals back um, and the next thing I would normally do is go to crop, but again, in this, in this circumstances, uh, I'm relatively happy. I think I might take the edge of this, these road tracks in the snow away, just pull that over slightly to there. Um, and then maybe bring, bring the bottom up just a little bit, just to, just to balance the image. There we go. And I'll hit return. Um, so I'm happy with the, uh, with the crop. Now I'm going to go into um, going to go into the basic functions here, and I'm going to open up the shadows a little bit. Here we go, not too much. Bring down the highlights. Really bring those highlights down so we can really make that sky pop. Now one of the real key points to uh, to doing any any shot is not to overdo the brightness um, with the with the general basic sliders. What I like to do is relight the scene. Uh, individually using uh, radial filters or, or, or linear gradients so we, we will keep it relatively dark we will take the sky however so we'll go to masks and we will take the sky and we'll select sky I do love how the uh, the intelligent feature works uh, masking the sky um, and then what we'll do is we're going to bring up a bit more color into that sky quite a bit up to about 60 there on temp and then I'm going to bring the the magenta up just to balance that color off not too high so around about uh, probably around about 40 that works quite well we do need to then take this color from this sky and apply it to to the actual image itself so i'm going to select create a new mask go to linear gradient and i'm going to pull a linear gradient from the bottom upwards as you can see just like that um, and then I'm just going to bring the temp up in, in there just a little bit, just to just so we get a similar color. Um, and I'm just going to bring up that the magenta again, just a little bit, not too much. Just back the saturation off just a little bit there. So we just got that that sort of hue from the sky onto onto this image. So um, okay, next thing we're going to do is uh, we're going to go back to that sky. So we're going to select another mask select the sky again and then we're going to brighten the sky up a little bit not too much just a little bit more there bring down the highlights just a little bit more as well add in some uh, some clarity clarity really can can make a sky pop you can see that that's working quite well over here and i might even bring the saturation up just a little bit more on that sky that works quite well that's great right um yeah, that looks looks pretty good as a sky. I might darken it from the top slightly. So I could take another mask, a linear gradient, and I could bring it in from this side, just over here. And remember how uh, a linear gradient works. This top line, this red dot line, is 100% of whatever you do. And it gradients right the way through to the bottom line with the white dot, which is zero. So if I if I darken this image here, if I go in here and move the exposure down, it will be 100% of what I've chosen here, say 1.5 stops. It's 100% 1.5 stops there, and there's no change here. So it fades between those two points there. So you can you can see uh, how that works, just to sort of darken this side a little bit. And what I can do is I can put a bit of blue in on this side, 
just to balance the colors off because on the color wheel the opposite of yellows and oranges is blue so i can i can make the sky blue on this side just like that okay um and what i will do is now create one more linear gradient and just darken that top corner just a little bit more so just going to take that not too much and just a little bit more blue in there again not too much just to work that out so i want to try and bring up this color on this side so i'm going to create another linear gradient and bring it in from this side over here like this okay and then i'm going to uh bring up the um the temp and i'm going to add some more saturation to the area not too much because it can get a little bit overpowering there we go that works quite well and be and normally i would i would take out this area here by removing uh, using the mask removing this area but actually that golden light coming through here looks looks really good so i like it on lighting up the snow here so that's pretty good so what what i also would like to do now is perhaps do a little bit of day to night on this shot we've got a lantern here so i'm going to create a, a new radial gradient i'm going to put it over the lamp as such like this i'm going to brighten that up give it a hundred percent i'm going to bring some temp in just to give it the color of a a lamp with a little bit of a little bit of magenta there and then what we need to do is we need to zoom into this lamp so i'm just going to go into 100 percent. and what we're going to do is we're going to take away the radial gradient that's not in the lamp itself so we're going to subtract so we're in this mask clip we're going to subtract a brush and in the brush brush options we're going to put feather to zero and we're going to put the flow to 100%. So whatever I do will just remove the, the uh, radial gradient. So what we're going to do is we're going to go in and click next to the edge of the glass. Because it's the glass that's going to be illuminated. We're going to click once. Now we're going to hold down the shift key. And we're going to line up the edge of this, this uh, brush with the edge of this, this, this piece of the metal here holding the glass. And just click again. You see how it's done that? It's actually slightly brighter just on that inner edge. I'm just going to take that away there. And then I'm going to come in, slightly bigger brush, click, and then click again just to go across the top there, down through here, and down through here. And then I'm just clicking once and then holding down the shift key and clicking again. And I'm just going through, I think I've got auto mask on. I do, I just need to turn auto mask off. And then I can get a nice hard edge along that edge there like so. So I'm just going around the glass. Now make the brush just small enough to go inside this, this area here. Now you make your brush bigger or smaller than using the wheel on your mouse, or you can use the square brackets next to the return key to just get it just the right size. So, and I'm just gonna click there and click there using the shift key again so you can see what we've managed to do is we've managed to effectively take out any light um, from the radial gradient that uh, wasn't uh, needed so i'm now going to make my brush bigger and i'm just going to paint round try not to go over the over the lamp if you do by mistake like that you can just command or control z to undo and then you can just work your way around and take the rest of that that one out now if you if you think you've got it sorted you can just hover over the mask and you and you can see what's now masked now at the bottom there you can see there's a bit i missed so i can just go down there and just take that bit out as well just uh, make sure we're there so if we if we just zoom out a second just to see so that that lamp's now illuminated okay but what we're going to do is we're going to right click on there we're going to and um we're sorry we're going to left click on, on the radial gradient, we're going to right click on the dot and we're going to duplicate the mask because we want to make another radial gradient the, the same so it's still got the mask that we put, put in there. Now that's a bit, that is a bit bright, but what we can do is click on the top, top one. So we've got two there now, haven't we? So, and I'm just going to make this one smaller, the top one smaller. So it's actually looks like the lamp itself. So if I, if I just click away from the mask a second, you can see that it's it's now illuminated in there uh, it looks like the lamps in there as well so that that's working quite well um, if you want to make it brighter you can just go into 
um, either of the two masks that we've created. So let's say, for example, we'll go to the, the lower one, which is the bigger area, and we can increase the highlights if we want to. We can increase the whites if we want to, if we want to just keep boost it, boost it up further. But I'm actually just going to just going to bring that. That works quite well. Now, the real key to lanterns is what lanterns always do, which is light the ground and light the area around them. It's OK to light the lamp like this, but actually we need a pool of light on the floor around here. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a, another radial gradient and we're going to pull the radial gradient out underneath the lamp like this. So I'm just going to turn it slightly. So it's uh, I'm just trying to see which way the light would come. It would come towards us slightly. So it would come like this and we'd make that a little bit bigger. Um, and I'm just going to pull that right out over here. There we go. So now if I bring up the exposure, you'll see that you'll light the area underneath the lantern okay not too bright don't overdo it and of course we need to match the color this that's very white now so we just bring up the temp just to match match that color with a little bit of magnolia there just to just to match it in there it's actually a little bit bright in the center so i'm going to go back to the exposure slider and just bring that down slightly now it's also needs to be in the in a position where it looks like the light's coming down from above so i think that sort of works quite well there uh, I'm just going to bring that up a little bit more and I'm just going to bring that up that way a little bit and just stretch it out a little bit more so we've got the the light coming away now one of the things you do do with these type of lanterns is because the lamps inside there it, it tends to block the light directly below it so what do we what we need to do is whilst we're in this radial gradient we'll subtract a brush we'll reduce the flow down and we'll bring the feather right the way up okay and we'll take a relatively small brush here and what we're going to do is we're just going to circle round the bottom of the lamp just like that. Let's come out a little bit further and then I'm just going to darken that area a little bit more in the center. Come away again and a little bit smaller brush. And you see what we do is we create, I'm just going to turn the flow down a little bit more and just bring that out. There we go. So we create a shadow underneath it. In fact, we could even make it darker, so I could bring the flow up a little bit more, make my brush a bit smaller, and just really too much. So con com Control or Command Z to just take that out, take that flow back down again. I'm just going to work that in again. There we go. So you can see that creates uh, a little area of darkness underneath there. What I, what I probably want to do is actually make it even darker. So what I'm going to do is create a new brush, okay, with quite a low flow, high feather. I'm just going to put a, a brush in there as such, like this. And then I can bring down the exposure still further. You can actually get it so it's completely dark if you want to at the bottom, like this. You see how that works? So actually, I think that's not bad. I'm just going to reduce the flow a little bit more, take a slightly bigger brush and just build that up a little bit more. And that's your shadow at the bottom of the light that you would get. Yeah. So I can go back to the, the pool of light here and I can, if I want to, um, make it a little bit brighter. Um, and you have an effects slider. So once you've got an exposure level that you like, Inside the, the mask itself, mask 8, as you can see here, um, there is a, an effect slider. And you can increase the effect of the light or decrease the effect of the light. Likewise, you can also move the exposure if you want to. Just bring that up a little bit more. So I can bring that up. That works quite well. I'm just going to add a little bit more saturation to that. And just bring down the highlights slightly. And a real trick when you're putting artificial light in is whilst you're in this particular mask is go down and add some clarity, right? Clarity really does work. It really makes it pop. It Because uh, light can be quite harsh in, the, in these type of circumstances. So um, so that, that works quite well indeed. So I think I need to put a little bit more light over here as well. This lantern would light over here. Um, so either I can... Uh, whilst in this mask, I can add a brush. OK, so now this brush will add light wherever I want to go because I'm adding. So if I could just take that light out that way, as you see, just paint that in over there. So you've got this this bit of light moving away 
over that way and it may be slightly brighter there also on this side here it would be brighter here so i'm just going to build that up there just add in a little bit more light so you're getting the four the four windows of the lantern effectively concentrating the light and there would be a little bit down here as well so just because my flow is quite low my feathers high i can just keep my finger on the mouse and just gradually build up that that level of light there we go so that works that works quite well so so that gives us the light around i might just brighten that a little bit around the bottom there just a little bit there because a bit too dark there we go there we go good stuff right what i'm also going to do is i'm going to light the windows of the church as well but before i do that i would like to to just emphasize this little chapel a little bit more with some radials so i'm going to create a new mask go to a radial gradient and i'm going to pop a radial gradient quite a big one up on this window up here like this and i'm just going to bring the brightness up slightly not too much because the snow there so i bring the highlights down just to, to stop that going too much and uh and I'm just going to open up the shadows as well, just a little bit, and add in just a bit of colour, just to make that match there. I don't want to lighten the sky too much here, because it creates a halo along the edge. So what I can do is subtract the sky, and that will just take that out from there. I can right-click, delete this, uh, uh, duplicate this mask, and then just move this down to the doorway. So I can just bring this down here, and we can just light up that doorway a little bit. That works quite well. And it sort of highlights this light coming around here as well. Again, I will subtract the sky so we don't get too much brightness up there. And then I need to do the same over here. So I'm just going to right click on here, duplicate the mask, select it, move it across. And we'll put it on the end of this, uh, end of the building here. A bit wider. Might even come over a little bit just to here, just to, just to make that work. So I'm going to subtract the sky. Don't want to light the sky up up there. And also, I don't want too much light around here uh, or up on the roof. So I'm just going to take uh, subtract uh, a brush, uh, pretty low, feathers high. Take a big brush and just bring this down slightly around here and around here. Yeah, because I'm going to fill this in with a little bit more light around here as well. So we'll just uh, just take that out. That's good. And then um, I'm going to create a new mask this time, new radial gradient, and I'm going to pop one in along the bottom here. And I'm just going to bring that very subtle, this one, very subtle, just, just to bring it up a little bit, a little bit of colour. That's nice. I might even add a little bit of clarity to that one. There we go. So what we've done is effectively sort of illuminated the scene a little bit as though the lantern was lighting it. Not too much on the upper area, um, not too much down here. In fact, I want to bring that one down so I can just click, click on that and just bring that down a little bit. And um, OK, so we've got the building radial gradients looking OK. Um, I, I don't want to make this video too long, so I'm not going to go through and light the windows. Uh, on this video normally I would in my own time light the windows and, and create some light from there but I think what we'll do now is try to wrap this one up a little bit is I think we need to do a little bit more with the sky and uh, we also just need to, to to sort of change the way this looks a little bit so what I'm going to do is um, I'm just going to bring the blues back in a little bit just to because it's a cold day the snow's there just balance those blues bring them down to about minus 16 there we go yeah, might, yeah, that'll do. Um, but I want to make the sky pop more. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to select um, a brush. I'm going to have the flow relatively low, feather 100%. Um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to click auto mask because I'm going to want to light the light areas uh, and not the darker areas. So what we're going to do now we've done that is select a little bit more temp, a little bit more magenta. Um, Bring the highlights up just a little bit, make it pop a little bit, a little bit of contrast and uh, plenty of clarity. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to pick up around these areas by painting in where the clouds are, are quite bright. Now, how the auto mask works is 
is it it looks where your cross is in the center of your brush and it uses that as the basis so if i go along here along this roof line here and try to light the clouds here it won't light the roof of the church it'll only do the the clouds as you see i'm going backwards and forwards i'm not crossing onto the church and it hasn't illuminated the church edge which is what you want so even if you take a larger brush as long as you stay out on the areas you want to be as i go around here see so brighten this up it's not brightening the church up because the auto mask function sticks to whatever it is that you want to uh to illuminate so the edge of these clouds is all i want to bring up and the edge of these clouds here so i'm just bringing that up a little bit more make the brush smaller just get in there that leading edges of those clouds there look just just bring them bringing them up a little bit brighter same up here and a little bit more here maybe i'm just going to bring these these bits in the clouds up here a little bit brighter as well so as long as you don't cross over onto the other areas as long as your cross in the center of your brush stays where you want it to be like here for example i can brighten that bright area there without brightening same through here for the trees i can brighten the sky if i go for a bigger brush like that i can brighten the sky behind the trees but not the trees because we want to effectively light up these areas i'm just going to put a bit more over here just want to make these a bit brighter still There we go, that's looking pretty good. So now I can make adjustments to that. Now I've put that, because if I hover over the mask, you can see where I've painted. Um, and I can bring up the contrast a little bit more in the sky there. Bring up the highlights a little bit more in the sky, make it pop a bit more. We can uh, we can try to add a little bit of shadow just to open up a little bit. I can add even more clarity if I want to, to really make the sky pop. And maybe a little bit more, a little bit more yellow there. That works quite well. Um, yeah, that looks that's looking pretty good, to be honest. So maybe we'll just try a vignette. So I'm just going to come out of the masks. I'm going to go down to effects and uh, I'm just going to go into post crop vignette and just do a minus of about minus 15. I think something like that. And then really important when you do a vignette, the feather slider below it, move that out and you'll feather away the vignette. It will look it will look quite good if you do that. So the final touches, I just need to balance this image. So I'm going to go into my whites and my blacks. So I'm going to hold down the option or alt key, and then I'm going to move my whites up and you can see the lantern there is very bright. So I, I, I don't want to go too far. I'm going to go about plus 30. And then with the blacks, I'm just going to bring them back just so the blacks just start to, to touch. So I'm holding down the option or alt key and I'm moving the slider very small amount there, to be absolutely honest with you. Um, and then, to just finish off, I'm just going to bring up the exposure a little bit more, a little bit more contrast. That's good. And I'm going to call that and done. So um, hopefully you enjoyed that. Hopefully uh, you had fun following along with me. And uh, if you uh, if you like what I do, I've done here and you like what I'm doing, please like the video and also um, it'd be great if you'd subscribe to follow my journey here along with, uh, with YouTube. So, uh, any comments or questions, put them below and, uh, until the next time, bye-bye for now.